Yeah, good afternoon. This is Richard Mabala again with our program of a poem a day keeps the virus at bay. Uh, today we're going to look at uh, a poem called Building the Nation by Henry Barlow. Henry Barlow is a Ugandan. He was himself a permanent secretary, so I think he knows what he was talking about uh, in the 1960s in Uganda. This poem is at the request of someone from Simiu, and I welcome anyone else who would like to make requests uh, from the, the book of selected poems by the Institute of Education, which is where this poem comes from, uh, or from the book of Summons, which is also used in, in the syllabus. So the poem today, Building the Nation, is a little bit similar to the poem yesterday. Yesterday the poem was called The Freedom Song, uh, but there wasn't very much freedom. And the poem today is, is, is called Building the Nation, and when we listen, uh, you will have to decide to what extent uh, the permanent secretary was actually building the nation. Um, in the poem, the persona, the person who is speaking, is the driver of the permanent secretary. So let's hear what he has to say. Today I did my share in building the nation. I drove a permanent secretary to an important, urgent function, in fact to a luncheon at the Vic. The menu reflected its importance. Cold bell beer with small talk, then fried chicken with niceties, wine to fill hollowness of the laughs, ice cream to cover the stereotype jokes, coffee to keep the PS awake on the return journey. I drove the permanent secretary back. He yawned many times in back of the car. Then to keep awake, he suddenly asked, did you have any lunch, friend? I replied, looking straight ahead and secretly smiling at his belated concern, that I had not, but was slimming. Upon which he said with a seriousness that amused more than annoyed me, Mononchi, I too had none. I attended to matters of state, highly delicate diplomatic duties, you know. And friend, it goes against my grain, causes me stomach ulcers and wind. Ugh, ugh, he continued yawning again, the pains we suffer in building the nation. So the PS had ulcers too. My ulcers, I think, are equally painful. Only they're caused by hunger, not sumptuous lunches. So two nation builders arrived home this evening with terrible stomach pains, the result of building a nation different ways. So uh, that is the poem. Now if we go through it stanza by stanza, Betty qua Betty. In the first stanza, uh, we see the driver saying uh, that he drove the permanent secretary uh, to a, an official lunch at the Vic. I think the Vic is a big hotel. Um, <clears throat> in the second stanza, uh, the driver contrasts. Uh, he shows the difference between what is being eaten and drunk and what is being talked about. So on the one hand, they have a very nice lunch. They have beer to start with then fried chicken, they have wine, uh, they have ice cream, and then they finish with coffee. And all this time, what do they do? They have small talk, in other words, umbe umbe atu. Niceties, just mazumumze uh, kawaida. Um, hollow laughs, they laugh at each other's jokes, but I don't think they're very funny, because the jokes are just stereotype jokes. And finally, coffee, so that they don't fall asleep when they go back to the office. In the third stanza, uh, the driver is now driving the permanent secretary back home, who is yawning a lot because he's feeling sleepy after all he has eaten and drunk. So the, the secretary then asks the driver whether he has eaten. Now, I don't think he's very, he's very concerned. He was actually, he did this in order to keep awake. So he had to talk about something. 
and he asked him if he had any lunch and the driver said no he hadn't but he was slimming now if the permanent secretary was really concerned he would know that the driver is not slimming that he was sitting in the car waiting for the permanent secretary to come back so that he could do his job that's what he's meant to do as a driver uh, but because the driver said he was slimming um, the permanent secretary actually says that uh, he didn't eat either yeah? I too had none he had not had not eaten anything he was concerned with matters of state uh, diplomatic duties um, and it actually um, is painful the secretary says he has ulcers because of all this hard work that he has to do which is very painful he has no time for eating yeah? so here we see the permanent secretary is telling a lie <laughs> and then so in standard five the, the the driver says oh so the permanent secretary had ulcers too the driver has ulcers but he has ulcers because he doesn't eat enough well the permanent secretary has ulcers because he's probably eating too much hmm? this is the difference and he finishes in the last stanza uh, that both the permanent secretary and the driver arrived home that evening with bad stomach pains because of the ulcers because they were building the nation in different ways so from this poem first of all we can ask ourselves who is building the nation in this poem is it the permanent secretary who's gone to have an official lunch but actually at the official lunch they they only have small talk and, and laughs they're not really doing anything any serious business uh, or the driver who is doing his job in making sure the permanent secretary goes to the to the meetings that he is supposed to go to mm -hmm. and just as in the poem yesterday um, the freedom song we see irony and the irony comes out very strongly in, in the last in the last stanza so two nation builders arrived home this evening with terrible stomach pains the results of building the nation different ways um, are they building a nation hmm? it's the opposite of building a nation if the permanent secretary is just going to have a good lunch we can't really say he's building the nation and this irony is really at the basis of, of the themes of the poem that on the one hand you have a class of people who are eating very well and enjoying themselves while claiming to work and on the other hand you have like the pump secretary and on the other hand you have the driver who is working uh, but is not getting anything to eat from the way he works so there is a class difference here between the haves and the have-nots Hmm. secondly um, I think the second theme is as we saw in a freedom song yesterday I think the permanent secretary is, is rather like the employer at um, it's hypocrisy yeah? the man has gone to have a very good lunch and then in the car he claims that he, he didn't eat anything he was too busy um, doing serious government business um, he was trying to show that he was the same as the driver uh, but maybe the third thing is that uh, the driver obviously unlike Atieno who, who was very young he understands what's going on he he can see the hypocrisy of the of the permanent secretary and that's why we can see him uh, making fun of the permanent secretary by the way he tells the story um, and the comments he makes about uh, they were having beer with small talk and then fried chicken with nice tis, uh, good food nothing worthwhile in eating and nothing worthwhile in, in what they're talking about and even when he says he was slimming he was really he was secretly smiling at the fact that the permanent secretary was was pretending to be concerned about his driver when when he wasn't hmm? So we can see lots of contrasts in this poem. There's a contrast between what they eat and drink and what they talk about. There's a contrast between the life of the permanent secretary and the life of, of the driver. Um, 
And these contrasts all, all add to the irony of the fact that um, the irony of the title of the poem, Building the Nation. Um, the other thing that uh, we might talk about is uh, this poem, like, like the poem yesterday, again, it tells a story. We have a persona, we have someone who is telling a story, a driver, and we have a story about going to the lunch and coming back from the lunch. And this poem also has dialogue between, between the two characters. Um, the poet also adds one or two other small uh, poetic uh, methods. For example, if you look at the first stanza, he says, I drove a permanent secretary to an important, urgent function, in fact, to a luncheon at the Vic. So the words function and luncheon rhyme. So these words show that um, it, it makes the contrast between what should have been a function, but was actually just having a good meal, function, luncheon. And then in the uh, first, second, third, fourth, fourth stanza, um, when the, 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 the permanent secretary is talking uh, in the middle, he says, I attended to matters of state, highly delicate diplomatic duties, you know. So delicate diplomatic duties, D, D, D. Now this is called alliteration, when all the words have the same sound at the beginning of the word. And I think here the poet is using this, or because the driver is, is, is making fun of the, of the permanent secretary, that the way they weren't delicate, diplomatic, or duties. But the way the permanent secretary mentions it, it looks as if he's doing something very serious. So he's stressing it by using the same letter, that we, the reader, realize that actually it is the opposite. Um, so, I don't know what you think. This is basically what the, the poem is about. I think it's quite a, a uh, an easy poem, like the one yesterday. Um, it tells a simple story, and it makes a comment about the way some people in government behave. So what do you think? Do you think this poem is relevant to Tanzania? Do you think that there are people who behave like the permanent secretary? Uh, do you think drivers are considered by their employers when their employers go out for a meal or whatever? How do you think this can, can be applied to our own lives? Eh? Or maybe it can't be applied to our own lives, so um, that is for you to decide. I hope you enjoyed the poem and I look forward to, to any comments you may have. Stay, stay safe, stay safe and all the best. Bye.